Okay, Alex Webster looking on. Time running out. Six minutes and 47 seconds remain. Cowboys run first down. Danny Reeves with the football. Again, great blocking out in front of Danny Reeves. And would you believe he fumbled the football? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. Welcome to the Gridiron. Before we get started, just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well, the New York Giants and their wide receiver position. Um... Now, on their depth chart, they got 14 guys. I mean, obviously, they're not all going to make the team, not all going to make the practice squad. So, you know, um, they're starting three. You know, nice. Nice. I mean, I'm not putting them in the top five. I'm not probably going to put them in the top 15, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, overall, you know, very talented. Okay. They all got one big problem. They all have a tendency to get hurt, which is not good. And, of course, then it makes it, you know, even a rarer occasion when all three of them are on the field at the same time. Um, you know, I mean, Kenny Galladay only missed, I think, three games last year. So that was good. You know, that, you know it made 14 out of 17 games. But, uh, you know, Sterling Shepard... He's a walking injury waiting to happen. Kadarius Tony, he, uh, he had six different injuries last year, was twice on the COVID. He just had his knee scoped, which was which was a different injury. He didn't have a knee issue last season. I mean, he had like oh, almost every other body part. All right. But uh, so I had his knee scoped, so that's something else. So, um... You know, to get all three of these guys on the field at the same time is going to be, you know, not going to be an easy feat. So, Giants need some, uh, so we'll need some backup. Now, as I said, I mean, you know, there's 11 other guys that they got on the roster here. Now, you know, some, some are going to make the roster, some ain't, you know, some, I mean, some of the guys are just like, you know, they're pretty much going from one team to the next, trying to hook on someplace for, you know. Uh, Giants got a couple interesting guys. Um, of course, then we got uh, you know, the guy I'm looking forward to watching is Wandale Robinson, see what he can do. But uh, there's also a couple guys on the roster, okay, that have that, uh, that connection with Shane and Dave and that's probably one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why they're on the roster right now. So let's take a deep dive, shall we, into the New York Giants wide receiver position. All right, now, the New York Giants. All right, here's the depth chart here. All right, here's the big three right here. All right, we got Galladay, you got Tony, you got Shepard. Now, with Galladay, you know, I mean, last season he made 14 out of 17 games, right? I mean, all things considering, that's that was not too bad, not too bad. You know, I mean, he... He didn't grade out too bad, you know, 68.3 on his offensive grade. Yeah. Nothing super spectacular, but I mean, you know, you can obviously see he had better grades with Detroit. I mean, 81.6, 79.9, 81. So basically he graded out like an 80 when he was with Detroit. All right. Detroit's not a juggernaut. Okay, they're always picking in the top five in the draft. Okay, so they have their problems. So, yeah, if, if he's grading out at 80 there and we got him only to be a 68.3, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, what? He's got 14, played in 14 games, right? Last season. I mean, he caught 48% of the balls of 37 catches on 76 targets, five. Paid him like $18 million a year on average. He got 521 yards. I mean, not one touchdown. I mean, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, wow. 
And of course, then we got Kadarius Tony, Mr. Uh, what injury am I going to have this week? Yeah, he yeah, he missed uh, he missed a whole hell of a lot, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. He played in ten games, right? Two of the games he played less than ten snaps. <laughs> that means against the Rams he played six. The first game of the season he had five snaps, right? So of course he missed seven games, right? I mean, you know, he had a couple phenomenal games. Yeah, Cowboys couldn't stop him. The Rams couldn't stop him. Had, I think he had three catches on the opening drive. And then he came out of the game because he was injured. So, I mean, I mean, look at his passing grade. It's a 93 against the Cowboys. I mean, they just they couldn't cover him, you know. So, we'll have to wait and see if, um, you know, what Dable has in store for him. Right? If they can keep him healthy. Hopefully, he got his knee scoped. Hopefully, that'll help. But, uh, let's see. Where is he? And there he is, Tony. All right. Started only four games. My number one pick. <laughs> First round pick started in four games. Oh, my goodness. Let's see what we got. Caught 39 passes. All right. At least he caught 68 pass, percent of the passes that was thrown his way. All right. But well, yeah, he had no touchdowns. I mean, our first overall pick. All right. 420 total yards. I mean, Unbelievable. Then, okay, then we got Sterling Shepard. Love the guy to death, man. He can play on my team anytime. Just too many injuries. Hurt too many times. I mean, this is like his last year he graded out his worst from PFF. I mean, the year before that, he graded out 79 and 75, 67, 70. His rookie season he was a 66. Last year he graded out worst. Graded out a 64.6. I only played about one, two, three, four, five. Only played in seven games. Missed ten games last year. Sterling Shepard. Played in seven, started in six. At 36, I mean, but you figure, I mean, in, you know, you look at it like this. He played in seven games. He had 36 catches. That's five catches a game. Right? It's uh, sixty. It's eighty-five receptions for if he played the whole season. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty good. You know, you can't complain about that. Yeah, but I mean, he's got to stay healthy. I mean, that's <laughs> that's that's going to be the big problem there. The big three. All right, then of course, then we got Wandell Robinson behind him. All right, very very interesting to see. Yeah, you know, what well, Wandell can do. All right, this is in last year with Kentucky. I mean, you know, he did, you know, graded out at 91. I mean, his pass receiving grade, 90.9 with Kentucky, right? I mean, they're not a, they're not a juggernaut, all right? Yeah, you know, he wasn't doing too well at all with uh, Nebraska. So he transferred now, and he just took off there. I mean, you got 91 is offensive grade. I mean, I mean, look, you know, look, look at him. This is his, uh, all right. So his junior season, 104 receptions, right? Seven touchdowns. Very, very good. And Nebraska, they just, you know, I, I guess they weren't using him as much, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. But, you know, he had 91 receptions the first two years. But uh, he, he really took off at Kentucky. So, you know, I'm very anxious to see him get in there. You know, you know he'll get in there. First round, uh, I'm sorry, second round pick. He'll, he'll get in there. Then you got uh, Richie James, all right, from San Francisco. Let's see here. Well, okay. Now he, all right. So he had three seasons with San Fran. Didn't play last year. He injured his knee, and uh, he didn't play it all last year. All right, so he played 18, 19, and 20. Now, uh, oh, this is the long. He returns punts, too, and kickoffs, right? But here's his receiving. Now, his last year, in 2020, last year, you know, he, had, he you know, started seven games, caught 23 balls. He's played in 11, so basically caught, like, two passes a game. But you'll notice his average, 17 yards of reception, 27 and a half yards of reception, 14.4. You know, so, yeah. 
he gets down the field. Now, uh, you know, this is in 2020, the last year he played, you know, you know, he graded out like a 64 in 2020, he graded out a 62.8 his first year, graded out a 57.8, so nothing super spectacular. But, you know, he gets, he gets when he catches, he gets, he's, he gets down the field, which is good. All right. And then, of course, then we got Darius Slayton. And as I said with him, you're not sure if this is going to be his last season or not. Even if he does ball out, if he does ball out, he's going to want even more money. And I don't know if the Giants are going to wind up trying to sign him. I don't know if he's that important to them, to their plans going forward. You know, to say he wants $8 million a year. Just I don't know if the Giants are going to want to, you know, dishing that out for him. Now, if you notice here, I mean, you see his first season, he did he did the best. Look, he just went downhill. Every, you know, first year was 70.3. With Shermer calling the plays. The past two seasons, when we had the Clapper calling the plays, all right, Jason, he just got worse and worse. Last year, he graded out of 52.8 overall. I mean, yes, I mean, it's, it's, you'll notice his first 15 games, right? So take his first uh, 14 games in 2019 with Shermer calling the plays. Then the first game of 2020 against the Steelers, he caught a touchdown pass. So in his first 15 games, the 14 year in his first one in 2020, right? He had eight touchdowns in 2019. Then the first game of 2020, he caught a touchdown. <clears throat> so in his first 15 games, he had nine touchdowns. So then you take a game off the air, you put 15, and then you got 13 from last year. So you got his last 28 games, he had four touchdowns. I mean, he was getting like a touchdown every game and a half. Basically, his rookie season. So, basically, every three games, he was getting two touchdowns. Here, over his last 28 games with the Clapper calling plays, he's getting one touchdown every seven games. I mean, so, is it the system? Is it him? Is, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, it's, it's a big season for him. Regardless, even if the Giants don't sign him. I mean, because he's going to want, you know, want to get paid. So he's going to want to try to do as best as he possibly can this season just for his his future. You know, because, I mean, he's going to want to get a little nice contract from some team, at least a few years, you know, more than what he's making now on his rookie deal. That's for sure. So this will be a big season for Darius Slate. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what the Giants have in store for him as far as trying to put him in. But, you know, I mean, hopefully Richie's healthy. All right. Uh, Richie James is healthy, right? But I'm saying, but, you know, the, the, the guys back here, not bad. You know, as I said, I'm very interested to see what Wandell can do. All right, then we got then we got the guys kind of like that leftover. You know, C.J. Board was here from last year, okay? But he's been kind of bouncing around, as you can kind of see. I mean, right? I mean, since 17, right? It was Baltimore, 10. I mean, look, I mean, right? 27 teams with Baltimore, Tennessee, Cleveland, Jacksonville, New York. But the Giants have had him for the past, um, this will be his third season, right? 20, uh, 2020, right? It's claimed, right? Uh, 2021, last year, and now he's on. He's still here, right? So he's been with us for the past three seasons, all right? Now, is he going to make any type of a splash? Yeah. Who knows? But, I mean, you're going to start seeing a little bit of a theme like this, right? Bouncing around from one team to the other. All right, so that's CJ Board. And after CJ Board, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over. And I'm gonna go to David Sills, okay? Who we had last year. We had um, we had um, what do we got? Actually, we got him since 19. But you this is he's one of three guys. Okay, you start you'll start seeing this here. Okay, right. 2019, he was with Buffalo, Dable and Shane. Okay, so there's a little familiarity there. All right, so now will he, you know, hang on and make the roster or practice squad just because, you know, the familiarity with Buffalo and, and he's here, you know, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he was waived. He was on a practice squad. He was activated. He was waived. He was practice squad activated. Practice squad activated. Practice squad activated. You know, he's waived. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's. 
I mean, so don't expect too much from him, but there's a possibility just because I mean the familiarity with you know, him with uh, Buffalo and with the you know, with the Giants, maybe he might wind up making a team. We'll have to wait and see. But then this next guy too, Foster, right? He um, he's got the familiarity thing going on there too. So you'll you'll notice. I mean, he he he's even worse. So what do we got? Since 2018, right? So we got 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is fifth year, right? <laughs> Buffalo, Green Bay, Washington, Miami, Dallas, Giants. Six team in five years, right? But you'll notice, all right, Buffalo, right? So he's got familiarity with Shane and Dable and... To, and he graduated from dun, 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 Alabama. So in 2017, the year before he got to Buffalo, he was at Alabama. 2017, who else was at Alabama? Who was the quarterback coach of Alabama? Dable. So, so Dable's got him, had, had him, had him at Alabama. He had him here at Buffalo, and now he's got him here again in New York. So that familiarity. So. Quite possibly look for, you know, Foster maybe to make the team or maybe practice squad. All right. Then we got Khalil Dorsey, who has no, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> the only one he has would be um, with Wink Martindale. And that's, you know, I mean, Wink can maybe tell, maybe say what kind of maybe a, a player he is, you know. But, he, you know, Wink's defense, Khalil Dorsey's offense, you know. But uh, maybe Wink put in a good word for him. Who knows? But you'll, you'll notice, I mean, since the uh, past couple of seasons, 2021, he was with the Ravens, right? Now he's with the Giants, right? But, I mean, the same thing. It's a free agent. He was waves, practice squad activated, practice squad activated, you know, up and down, injury reserve, COVID injury reserve. You know, I mean, right? Don't, don't expect, you know, don't expect the world from him. Then we got Colin Johnson, who we had last year, Okay. All right, who was with Jacksonville? All right, who started off at Jacksonville? He had a nice career at Texas. Yeah, you know, it was kind of, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, six foot six, you know, two twenty. Kind of, you know, kind of was kind of hoping maybe he'd have a little better, you know, a little better career. I mean, he, he only had I think eleven catches last year. Yeah, eleven. Colin Johnson, twenty-one targets. This, I love this screen. It just jumps up and down. 11 catches, 105 yards, 9.5. Of course, you know, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't make the end zone. But, uh, you know, he, he started one game. He was in 12. So, basically, he played in 12 games. He had 11. So, basically, caught like one pass a game. I was kind of hoping a little better things from him, but it is what it is. All right. So, it'll be interested to see if he winds up making a team. All right. Then we got, who we got next here? Alex Bachman. All right. So him. He's been with the Giants the past couple of seasons, right? 20, 21, and 22. All right, a lot of times, you know, he, he was like he was on the practice squad quite a bit. He was activated. He was on the practice squad, you know, activated. I don't, I, you know, he started off obviously with the Rams in 2019. Then they waved, he got injured, injured reserve, and they got, he, then he, they let him go, and he gave a settlement. All right? Then the Giants wanted to picking him up. I'm not sure. Let's see. Alex Bach he played in three games. They didn't have a reception. Uh, let's see. Oh, he had one. He had a rushing attempt, minus three yards. But um, what do we got? Yeah, no, no, no targets, no receptions, nothing. So he. He played in three games and have, didn't, didn't have anything. So, I mean, don't expect, you know. You know they, they, he has no familiarity with, uh, you know, anybody, Shane or Dave or nobody. So, all right. Then we got Travis Toivonen, who was, uh, who we had last year. Okay. He was with Seattle in 21. Then they waived him. All right. There was a Giants practice squad pretty much the whole season. All right. Now still with the Giants once again. So I mean six foot four, right? Nice size, but 
we'll have to wait and see. Don't expect too much from him. And then the last one who also has that, uh, you know, the connection going on there, the, the, the law of familiarity is Mr. Prohl here, okay? Once again, now we look at him. I mean, he's just like quite a few of the other guys. I mean, what do we got? 18. He came in in the league in 18, okay? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Fifth year, right? <laughs> it was Buffalo, Tennessee. Then he's with the Rams. Then he was with the 49ers. Then he's with the Chargers. Then he went back to Buffalo. Now he's with the Giants. So five years is his seventh team in five years. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's good at me. I mean, I'll tell you why. I wish he, he was good as his father, Ricky Pro. Ricky Pro was a very good wide receiver. If, 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 if he was as good as his father, we got ourselves a hell of a ball player there. Let me tell you what. Um, he's apparently he's a very good route runner. But, I mean, but also, you know, he was with Buffalo in 18 when Shane and Dable were there. He went back to Buffalo. I mean, he was on the practice squad, you know, with Buffalo. And now the Giants picked him up. So they got the familiarity there. So quite possibly look for him either maybe not to make the team, but maybe to stick on the practice squad, okay? So, um, but I mean, you know, don't expect the world from him. I mean, this is 17 in five years. Don't expect the world from him, you know. But, uh, you know, the big thing, all right, is that, you know, I don't know. Put these three guys in a bubble until opening kickoff against Tennessee. You know, when, after after the opening kickoff against Tennessee, take the bubble wrap off of them and see if you can actually get all three of them on the field at the same time. If you can, just get down on your knee and thank the Lord above that we actually got them all. You know what I mean? And how long are you all going to stay on the field at the same time? Who knows? But, I mean, all in all, I mean, if, if we can keep these guys healthy, you know, that's a huge if. You know, we have some very nice receivers, without question. Okay. Then we have some very nice receivers and it's, you know, behind him. And I said, Juan Dale, I'm really excited about seeing what he can do. Uh, James Ritchie, if we can keep him healthy, you know, he gets down the field. When he catches the ball, he gets some yards. And, of course, Darius Slayton is a huge season for him. He wants, He's going to want a ball out and do the best he possibly can when he's on the field. All right. And I said, then we got a few other guys back here who will look quite possibly look from maybe not to maybe make the team, okay, uh, but at least stick on the practice squad because they got that familiarity. They got the Shane and Dable combination because they were with uh, with those guys in Buffalo. But, I mean, all in all, I mean, the Giants have a, have, have a nice, I'm not going to say top 10, top 15, but they have a nice group of wide receivers. The biggest problem, Biggest question, which we're not going to know until the season's over, with, is how healthy do they stay? I mean, that's going to be that's going to be the key. Yeah, I mean, because if if we got a if, if we're starting in week seven or eight or whatever, and we got Darius Slayton as our left wide receiver, uh, Richie James as our right wide receiver, and our slot is Wanda. You know, what I mean, and the, and the, these these are our backups. <laughs> Could be a long season for the New York Giants. So you see, I mean, we got plenty of, you know, we've got a lot of receivers. You know, I mean, there's there's a little a little decent amount of depth, you know, after the starting three. You know, as I said, I'll have to wait and see how much they start sneaking Wandell Robinson in there. You know, that, that you know, that they start off slow and just get them more and more as time goes by. Obviously, of course, you know, if Sterling Shepard gets injured again, you know, Sure, he'll get more. Wanda will get more playing time, uh, or maybe if uh, Kadarius Tony gets injured again, uh, you know, we might see more and more of Wanda. So, very interesting to see him. A few other guys, you know, that uh, have some experience. Um, hopefully, can certainly help the team out. But I mean, and then then of course, then you got Darius Slayton. Might be his last year with the Giants. I have to wait and see. I mean, he, he's, he's you know, should I mean somebody will pick him up even if the Giants don't resign him but um, you know he'll, he'll need to have a nice 
nice, decent season that the Giants are going to wind up resigning him because, you know, he's going to, you know, want a little, obviously a little bit more money he's making right now. And I don't know if the Giants are going to prioritize trying to sign Darius Slayton next season. But the big thing is, you know, keeping the, the big three healthy, you know, Galladay, Tony, and Shepard, if we can keep them healthy. You know, we'll have a, we'll have a, you know, a very nice receiving core. And as I said, then you'll have a, a few other guys on the sideline that'll, you know, come in and uh, we'll certainly be able to, uh, you know, help the offense out as well, too. But you also got to remember, you know, it's because last year, obviously in the past, however many, five seasons, we had, I know Evan Ingram drops the ball and I, all that, I, I get it. But regardless, if he's on the field, he's a mismatch, okay? And, uh, you know, so, and last year we also had Kyle Rudolph out there, too. You know, it was right. Not that he didn't produce too much, but then again, neither did anybody on the offense produce too much last year either. But, I mean, you know, our uh, tight end position this week, this this year is going to be a little bit weaker than it has been in past seasons. All right, I mean, hopefully, I'm hoping Bellinger does phenomenal. Hopefully, Ricky Seals-Jones does phenomenal, but, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see on that. But, I mean, the, the, the thing is, if we can keep the big three healthy, all right, Galladay, Shepard and Tony and sprinkling a little bit of Wandell Robinson, I think the Giants just might be in, in a pretty decent shape this year. Now, if, if they, the wheels start falling off the bus and, you know, and Shepard winds up, he's injured, he misses six, seven, eight games, Kadarius Tony misses half the season and all that. Yeah. <laughs> it's certainly going to hurt the Giants uh, this, this season. Um, and it's especially not going to hurt, obviously, the Giants. But we're trying to give Daniel Jones the best opportunity possible, you know, to see if he's the franchise quarterback. And if all his best weapons, I mean, Saquon gets hurt, Galladay gets hurt, Shepard, you know, Tony, I mean, his four biggest weapons, if they, you know, they have a tendency of getting hurt. I mean, the more they get hurt, the more it's going to hurt Daniel Jones' chances of, coming back as a quarterback for the New York Giants in the 2023 season. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!